Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah and welcome to a follow-up session to my discussion of how to transliterate Arabic on Windows, um, specifically for Microsoft Word on Windows, to how to transliterate Arabic on Mac. Um, and this actually is a system that works across various different Mac applications and so um, it, it's broader than just uh, using it on Microsoft Word. So in the process of uh, looking at how to install transliteration on a Mac, I'm going to reprise something that I discussed in the transliteration on Microsoft Word on a PC. And so I'm just going to briefly discuss simple transliteration, full transliteration, and then look at various standards, and then look at how to create sort of these transliteration systems in a Mac. What you'll notice on the top of my screen is I've actually got the transliteration font installed as my standard keyboard on a Mac. Of course, you can click that and switch to different keyboards. I've got an Arabic keyboard and I have the Mac English keyboard, but this is a special uh, keyboard that I've installed, which you can download from the internet and I'll show you how to do that. And that allows for the introduction of various kinds of diacritical marks. Now, simple transliteration, this is basically a way of writing Arabic accurately using Latin or Roman letters. In uh, simple transliteration, you don't use actually any special diacritical marks. You just go ahead and write words just using the standard English alphabet. And I apologize if my keystrokes sound a bit noisy here. So I'm going to just pick up a couple of words. Book is kitab. As you can see, there's no diacritics there. Whereas if you were to do it in full translation, you would use diacritics. Uh, hadith without diacritics. Although hadith is not probably a good example because it's a word which is used in English so widely that it's now considered part of the English language according to a number of dictionaries. I'll just think of a couple of other words. Uh, the word light is bulk. And that would be using an apostrophe. The word for new is jadid. The word for oops, that's also correcting uh, sadma for a shop um, would be written in that way. So that's in simple transliteration. Let's look at the same words in full transliteration. So kitab would be written in this way. Hadith would be written in this way. Bulk would be written in this way. Jadid would be like that. Sadma would be in that way. Let's do something with a va in it. Aadim. Quite useful because it has a number of uh, different characters. Um, the word sahih always strikes me as fascinating because it has so many letters uh, which would require diacritics. Okay, so those, uh, they should all be italicized, of course, because they're Arabic words, and I've not done that for most of these words. Um, now, I'm more or less following the International Journal of Middle Eastern Studies, the IJMIS standard, and this more or less corresponds with the um, Encyclopedia of Islam, uh, third edition. Um, it's somewhat different from the first and the second editions of the Encyclopedia of Islam, and I'd say that those two are sort of very common standards for, um, in the case of IJMIS, for modern Middle Eastern studies and in the case of Encyclopedia of Islam for kind of classical Islamic studies. So if you go to the internet and write IJMIS transliteration standards, you get the language chart for Arabic, Persian, and Turkish, and Ottoman, if I recall correctly. And so you can have a look at those just to get an idea of um, if, if this is unfamiliar to you. But uh, as you can see, when I was doing the full transliteration, I was just typing and it was automatically putting in the special letters. And the question is, how do you get that on a Mac? Now, uh, in my presentation on how you do that in Word, you actually have to go in and sort of set up shortcut keys. I tried to do that with a Mac, and Word doesn't have or doesn't give access to the full range of characters that a Unicode font has to offer, which I found somewhat surprising. There's also a kind of character viewer on a Mac system, which you can access through system preferences, and there you'd have to, using your mouse, select the special characters, and I've tried using that, but that's um, extremely long-winded. And after a few days of searching and getting some direction from friends who had been well-established Mac users, I've recently started using Mac. It turned out that there was a, a keyboard that I needed to download and install. And so that's basically what I've done. Um, and as I pointed out earlier, I've got what's called British Diacritics. There's also an American version of this, since the British and American keyboards um, are slightly different. Although on these particular characters, there shouldn't be any difference, of course. Let me show you where you can get this um, keyboard. Um, if you go on to Google and search for Arabic Diacritics Keyboard Mac, um, one of the first results that comes up, at least on my system, is 
from Norway. And on looking at this, I realised I actually knew the person who set this up, um, a scholar whose work I read as an undergraduate, uh, an Islamic law specialist, um, Professor Knut Vikra, wonderful scholar on uh, Islamic law, um, but uh, someone who very early on set up uh, the standard for uh, using Arabic letters. And this is a little bit old, and I hope uh, this stays around for a long time. I, it doesn't actually have a date that I can see, but what you want to do is you need to download the diacritics keyboard. There are a few options here, and what I'm looking for is basically the Unicode option. And uh, as I've discussed in my presentation on uh, how to do this for a PC, uh, Unicode character sets are translatable across all Unicode fonts. Um, and uh, that has significant advantages, um, I suspect, also for typesetting of work. So here, as he says, the use of Unicode fonts, what you can do is you can download the diacritics keyboard, uh, diacritic keyboard layout. Once you've downloaded that, it's a zip file, and you'll need to uh, open up the zip file, naturally. And in the zip file, you've got um, a series of diacritics. It's in a number of languages, and you have the US, American, etc. And what I was interested in, naturally, was the British diacritics key layout. So once you're in this folder, what you'll do is, um, this actually, uh, this readme file gives a sort of very useful uh, outline of exactly what you need to do. So you basically look for the relevant folder, uh, the files named key layout and icons, I guess ICNS would be icons. So in my case, it would be British diacritics.keylayout and British diacritics.icons and put them both in the uh, folders library key layout. So if I just go to Finder, um, I'm going to first copy from British. Um, so I've copied those. Okay, so I need to go to Macintosh HD, go to library um, and keyboard layouts. And here, as you can see, I've already pasted them, but uh, otherwise I would be able to paste two items. I'm not going to paste those again since they're already there. So those two will then create uh, this option in system preferences. But first, before I can do that, or before you can do that, you actually need to log out and log in again. Now, I'm not going to do that because I've done this already, and if I log out and log in again, it would end the recording. Um, so I'm going to assume that you will log out and log in again. Once you've done that, I'm going to sort of show you how to get to keyboards in system preferences. You go to system preferences, keyboards, input sources, and then you click the plus. You would scroll down all the way to others, and in others you should find British diacritic. I'm not going to add it for some reason. I think it may be because I've already added it in the past. But um, in any case, uh, that should be available. Once you've added that, uh, you should be able to select it up here. By doing British diacritics, uh, you will have access to certain keys. So let me actually now show you what keys they are. So these are um, these keys. These are basically the relevant keys. Um, the long vowels, the ein and the hamza, um, although I've also provided the apostrophe. This is sort of like commonly used, but it's not the standard Unicode option for Ein and Hamza, or Hamza and Ein as I've got it here. So I'm going to delete those just for the sake of completeness. And here you have the long vowels, here you have the uh, various letters with dots underneath. Um, and how do you get them? Basically, you would use the option key of your Mac and press alongside the option key A I U or D H S T Z. Uh, and if you want the capital version of that, you'd press uh, the option key along with shift and the letter in question. These two, uh, Ayn and Hamza, have slightly um, perhaps unusual options, but they are J and L. So Alt-J will give you Hamza and Alt-L will give you Ayn. Um, but that should hopefully uh, clarify what the options are. And uh, just to demonstrate a few more words, um, not that <laughs> this is really necessary anymore, but um, let me, for example, write Sahih al-Bukhari. Um, so and you can see how easy that is. Um, I'm basically using the option key um, and the letter in question, and where it needs capitalization, as in the case of the first S I began with, I pressed the option key along with shift and uh, the letter in question. I hope this has been useful, and I hope this allows you uh, to write um, or transliterate Arabic accurately. And until we meet again in another video, take care.